the synodal pathway. The synodal church is a movement of the Holy Spirit leading us away from a top-heavy, power-structured, inward-looking, self-serving church to a church which everyone can buy into, clergy and laity alike. Bishops, priests, lay people, religious. It's not getting rid of doctrine, but understanding it in a new way, following the promptings of the Holy Spirit, working through all the members of the church. Synodal itself, I think it comes from a Greek word, which means walking together. Clergy and laity walking together in which everyone, especially those on the periphery of church life, are not left out. It is a process of discernment as to where the Spirit is leading us in today's world. Listening to each other in a non-judgmental way is at the very heart of the process. It's not about church leaders getting together, coming up with a formula for the church of the future. It's not about a decentralized church, but a recentralized church. The Spirit speaks through everyone, not just to those in authority. What matters is that we express ourselves openly and honestly and from the heart. The word which Pope Francis used is parousia. With Pope Francis, we're moving away from a command and control center type of church. It involves a consultation with the lay people in every aspect of church life. In the 60s, Vatican II tried this, but we ran out of steam, it appears. Now, there are certain temptations we need to avoid. The temptation is to try to treat the synod as a kind of parliament. This confuses synodality with a political battle in which in order to govern, one side most, must see the defeat of the other. So it's not a debating chamber like a parliament where the majority few wins. That's not the spirit's way. Temptation may also be to listen only to those who are already involved in church activities because it ignores a significant proportion of the people of God. Another temptation is only to see problems. The challenges and hardships facing our church and our world are many. Nevertheless, Fixating on problems will only lead us to be overwhelmed, discouraged, and even cynical. We need to abandon attitudes and complacency that lead us to make decisions purely on the basis of how things have been done in the past. Everyone in the church has a right to be heard, and everyone has a right to speak. Leave behind prejudices and stereotypes because they lead us down the wrong path towards ignorance and division. This includes a stereotypical view of the church itself. Synodality calls upon pastors to listen attentively to the flock entrusted to their care, just as the laity just as the laity to freely and honestly express their views. Everyone listens to each other, of course, with love. Overcome ideologies. We must avoid the risk of giving greater importance to ideas than to the life of faith that people live in their ordinary everyday lives. We are called then to become beacons of hope, not prophets of doom. Synodality is not lamenting and contemning with a grim-faced defensiveness. It's not a program rooted in prayer and the word of God and with an openness to the Holy Spirit. We can walk together despite our differences and overall sticking points. 
It calls for prayer, silent reflection, and communal discernment. However, the final decision on where the Spirit is leading us will be with the Holy Father. He's not just the successor of St. Peter, but Francis has vast experience of the synodal pathway from his work in South America, where most of his ideas were first nourished. The South American Church seems to be leading the way in synodality, mainly due to the Holy Father himself when he was there as an archbishop. The Synodal Church is not about conservatives versus liberals, which are political terms. It's not a debating chamber. The Synodal process needs a holy patience, as Pope Francis calls it. In the Church today, there is polarization and even animosity on so many issues, not just among clergy themselves, but also among the laity. But the Spirit can help us get to the heart of the matter and discern the root cause of those divergent viewpoints. By the use of what criteria and under whose influence have I come to believe the way I do? That's a good question for anyone to ask. So, in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us travel together down the synodal pathway with renewed faith in God and in each other, relying on the Holy Spirit to guide us in all our deliberations. Thank you for listening, and God bless you all.